The following program contains mature subject matter. Listener discretion is advised. Montreal's news talk leader, CJAD 800 presents Passion with sex therapist Dr. Lori Batito. To reach Dr. Lori, call 514-790-0991. Star Talk, a free call on Bell Mobility. And 800-491-CJAD. Now, here's Dr. Lori. Welcome to Passion, a show all about love, sex, and relationships. I'm Dr. Lori Batito. I am a clinical psychologist, also a sex therapist. Tonight, it is our regular monthly feature that we call Dating Dilemmas. I'm joined by Frank Kermit, who happens to be a dating coach uh, and a relationship coach. He is the founder of franktalks.com. He's the author of many books on the subject of dating, and he is uh, has now joined the... Uh, journalism team of the West End Times, so you can find his article about first date conversations in the in this uh, this week's uh, West End Times. 514-790-0991. Tonight we're going to talk about something that's come up in the last couple of days on my show, Barry's show, is the issue of shyness. And I'm not, it's, it's more of a curse than an issue, um, but it is something that a lot of people suffer with. So we're, we are going to talk about that. However, if you have any other questions, um, any other dating dilemma that you would like to discuss with us, Frank is here, and uh, we're both here to put our heads together and uh, help you out. 514-790-0991. You can also text us at 514-800. Frank, welcome back. Thank you very much, Dr. Loring. It's really great to be here. All right. Let's uh, go straight to the phone lines, shall we? Karen, hi. Welcome to the program. Hello. Hi, Karen. Hi. You didn't say my name, so. <laughs> well, now I did. Karen, <laughs> hi. Waiting here in the background for you. <laughs> yeah, I love calling in on your show. Oh, great. Okay. What I'd like you to explain is how can we tell the difference when we're meeting people if someone just wants to be friendly or a friend or more? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> I try. <laughs> okay, Frank, that's a big one. Well, actually, it's pretty simple. Is if it? They, if they're trying to spend any time with you alone or separate you from the group that they met you in, they're looking to find out more about you to see what is possible for the two of you. Okay. If someone really just wants to be friends, mm -hmm. they're not going to look to interact with you outside of that social situation. Okay. So they wouldn't necessarily say, let's go out for da-da-da exactly. if they just wanted to be friends with you. They wouldn't want to give you that idea? or they well, want in, personal time with you. If, if they're spending any personal time with mm -hmm. you, they're trying to figure out where exactly you might fit in their life in terms of what role you might play, what kind of relationship you could potentially have. So they may not know right at the beginning. So you won't know this, Karen, right off, yeah. you know, right off the top unless... They they don't want to spend any time with you alone. So yeah, but but some people, you know, they're just naturally so friendly, and it's it's confusing. You so they're know. flirty. You like they're, they're <laughs> you mean when you get flirted with? I guess that's I, I call it friendly, but you know, at oh. ease, very comfortable ch chat. You know, chit chat. Right. It's true. Like in a situation like at work, or you meet somebody and they're very very friendly with you, and they seem almost flirty. Like how do we read those signals? It's true yeah, that there's sometimes hard to interpret. They're being attentive. Okay, yeah. when you're talking about a work situation, generally people have to be polite. And that's one of the ways, that might be one of the guidelines. If they're in a situation where they have to be polite, okay. like a work situation, you have to get along with everybody regardless if you would rather not interact with them, you're working. So those are the types of things you just can't take seriously. However, when someone at work says, you know, we really should talk, uh, maybe we should go out for a coffee sometime, or I know you really like that movie, let's you and me go check out uh, the latest flick that's coming out. Mm -hmm. Now they want to try to get you alone. They're trying to bring you out of that social situation and spend more time alone with you. What if they say, well, let's, let's, let's have lunch, like, like you want to have lunch together today? Now, initially, because, again, if you're working with somebody, it might just be to establish enough rapport that you can get along at work. Okay. But let's look at the nature of the conversation. Are you only talking about work-related stuff, or you start talking about more personal things? Mm. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your past. Tell me about your likes and dislikes, things that have nothing to do with the job. Chances are somebody wants something more. Okay. Now, there will be people who can mislead you because they love the attention then that's where it gets dangerous. Yeah. Some people love the attention, and they're not capable of deeper intimacy. That's where it can get confusing. 
So that's where you might, you know, maybe some, those are some of the people that you might get confused with. And I guess, too, if it's someone at your work, you might want to be careful what you're going to disclose yeah. personally because... <laughs> Just like could, Facebook. They, they could be <laughs> jealous or competitive or... Exactly. Yeah. Is there, Good point. Is there a specific situation that you're in, Karen, that, that sparked the question? Um, yeah, just uh, for, for me, sometimes some people, you know, just are really friendly, and I'm taken aback by it, you know? Mm. <laughs> well, but some people are, and, and I, I think there, that is the fact that some people are more charming or friendly yeah. or flirty or, or what have you than others, and you have others that are very quiet. So there's, sometimes it's a character thing, but you can observe them with other people, and that will give you a yes. clue as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Karen, thanks Thank so much you. for calling in. Have a good Bye. night. Bye-bye now. Uh, coming back, we'll uh, continue with Dating Dilemmas and discuss uh, the curse of shyness, what you can do about it and how, um, you know, different things you can do to help you in the dating world with that. That's uh, coming up next here on Passion. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the book, I'm a Man, That's My Job, The Philosophy of a Seducer. Your inner game is as unique and personal as your signature or your fingerprints. This book provides you with the means to create your own seduction persona. By this, learn what it means to be a man and attract the women you want. Learn about how men and women think differently and how to take the lead in a relationship. This book is for you at franktalks.com. This is Passion with Dr. Lori Batito on Montreal's News Talk Leader, CJAD 800. Tonight on our regular monthly feature, Dating Dilemmas, we talk about this dilemma, and that is uh, shyness. Is it a curse? Has it been a curse for you? Well, Frank Kermit of franktalks.com is here uh, to talk to us about this. Actually, he runs groups for... Um, for men, uh, some of those, one group in particular is for adult male virgins, and that seems to be the biggest uh, roadblock, right? It's that shyness. Exactly. Unless we're dealing with someone who has a very personal, deep-rooted issue, like a history of sexual abuse, we're dealing with guys who are so shy that in because they haven't combated their shyness, they've never picked up on social skills throughout their development process. Mm. So when they're teenagers, they're not willing to go for it, they're not willing to make mistakes, they're not willing to suffer embarrassment or rejection. So those uh, unsocial behaviors, uncalibrated behaviors sort of get very entrenched. Right. And they end up being, you know, in their 30s, never having had a girlfriend and still being incredibly shy to talk to girls. Right. And and I, I, I do see this quite often in, in my office as well is um, usually it's usually men. I mean, I, I don't know. You know, men do seek out help, which is good, but, um, you know, who really don't quite know how to go about it. They they have a hard time just having conversations. Or one guy that I've spoken to has said he, he just doesn't know what to say. You know, it's it's like – or or he feels he has to always talk, you know, because he doesn't want the person to be bored or he's not sure. So, But it's like to think about what to say is something mm-hmm. that's really hard. Well, that's one of the things that I do when I'm dealing with a shy person. First thing I get them to do is I get them to tell me stories about their life, and we write them down. Okay. So we'll start off by favorite childhood memory, peak life experiences. Tell me about your favorite trip or place to visit. Tell me about your favorite food, your favorite holiday. We start talking about these favorite story topics. Now tell me one story that really shows why this is your absolute best memory. Once they give me the story, I look through it and I'll critique it. And I'll say, okay, well, this is not making you look so good. This makes you look um, unappealing. Saying it like this makes you look unattractive. Okay. For example, a guy's going to talk about his first time camping that he remembers as a wonderful thing. But he'll describe it as such. My friends dragged me because they knew I really wouldn't want to go. Right. Well, that doesn't show him as a very attractive person. He's not in charge. His friends are in charge of him. They have to drag him. He's not ready to go out and have fun and try new things. So I would edit that particular part of the story, and I would say something like, okay, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go, but I went ahead and did it anyway. Right. At least that shows that, okay, you're not really sure what you want to do, but you're willing to try it out. 
By the time I finish with them, they've got, let's say, a couple of dozen solid stories about their life. And because they've gone through my filter, the emotional needs theories, they know that it's a solid, attractive story. That gives them the motivation to go out and start telling these stories to the people they currently know, their friends. Okay. Then that's the So pra they practice. They, they practice with people that they know. Exactly. And I think that's the key is, is start to practice first. Um, have you ever wanted to date someone, but they were too shy to date you? Is shyness something that you find endearing, or is it? would you consider it a curse? And if you were one of those shy people, a guy or a gal, uh, how did you overcome it? Or are you still struggling with being shy? And, and this, this is a tough question, but have you ever lost the chance to be with someone that you really liked because you were just too darn shy to pursue or be pursued by that person? 514-790-0991, star talk, star 8255 on your Bell Mobility cell phone, or you can text us at 514-800. We're talking about shyness and would love to hear some of your shyness stories, if you have any, or if you have questions about how to overcome shyness, uh, then you can um, give us a call here. Coming up, we'll talk about what is it that can make a person shy? Is Are you born with it? Is this a personality thing? Do we just develop shyness? And then uh, we can talk about how we overcome it. All of that coming up right here on Passion on CJAD 800. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the book, I'm a Man, That's My Job, The Philosophy of a Seducer. Your inner game is as unique and personal as your signature or your fingerprints. This book provides you with the means to create your own seduction persona. By this, learn what it means to be a man and attract the women you want. Learn about how men and women think differently and how to take the lead in a relationship. This book is for you at franktalks.com. This is Passion with Dr. Lori Batito on Montreal's News Talk Leader, CJAD 800. Tonight on Dating Dilemmas with Frank uh, Kermit of franktalks.com, uh, also a uh, contributing journalist for the West End Times, the relationship uh, um, the, the, the columnist, that's it. I was losing my words there. Uh, we're talking about uh, shyness tonight, the curse of being shy. I don't know if you're in that situation or not, but what are some of the, uh, can we say there are causes of shyness? There's a number of causes of shyness where sometimes you're just dealing with someone who has low self-esteem. They don't think that they're interesting. They figure, no one's going to like me anyway. Why should I even bother trying? There's a fear of rejection. They mm -hmm. don't want to get hurt. Rejection is something very, very specific to shy people because shy people spend a lot of time in their own heads. Right. So when they like someone, they start building up this whole potential scenario and this potential future and uh, getting married and having kids. and So that when they finally approach the person and say, oh, by the way, I like you. Hey, let's go out for a cup of coffee. When the person says no... It's not a simple rejection anymore. They have to mourn this entire fantasy that they've oh, built up in their head because for them, it's more real than the reality. It's more, what's in their head is more real than the reality. Because they have a more of an emotional connection to it. Okay. But what the person who's standing over there that they barely talk to, they're, they're not as real to a shy person. What about this fear of making a mistake? I hear this often where, you know, listen, nobody's perfect, but there are some people who, don't want more they don't, they don't want to make that mistake they want to be perfect in and, the situation how can you be though okay well here's the thing in almost every other area of their life they're in a position to exercise some measure of control they're about to have a test in 3 weeks in school they can spend a lot of extra time studying so they can do perfect on that test when you're dealing with intimacy when you're dealing with dating relationships you don't control the other person. No. There's that X factor where something can go wrong. It may have nothing to do with you, but you'll still feel that it's your responsibility to make it work. Right. And we see this a lot as well in other forms of relationships where somebody thinks, well, if I just work harder, even if my partner is not living up to their end, it's going to work because right. I can make this relationship work even if my partner is not helping me out or doing their part. Also, they, they might feel responsible for all of the conversation, thinking like I'm the one who has to make sure I keep this going, so I've got to keep thinking of things to talk about and right. all of that. Because any silence is seen as just another form of failure. 
And what people don't realize is that pauses in conversation is very seductive. Right. Because a pause will allow you to think about what's just been said. Right. And what you'd like to do next. Oh, you're practicing that. I oh, see yeah. that. <laughs> Oh, You're being yes. very seductive, Frank. Why, thank you. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Oh, shucks. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll. The, the curse of being shy. Uh, we're, uh, that's the, our dating dilemma for tonight. Shyness. Uh, we want to help out people who are shy. If you have questions, do give us a call. Don't be shy. Uh, right here on CJAD 800. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the book, I'm a Man, That's My Job, The Philosophy of a Seducer. Your inner game is as unique and personal as your signature or your fingerprints. This book provides you with the means to create your own seduction persona. By this, learn what it means to be a man and attract the women you want. Learn about how men and women think differently and how to take the lead in a relationship. This book is for you at franktalks.com. This is Passion with Dr. Lori Batito on Montreal's News Talk Leader, CJAD 800. Dating Dilemmas tonight. Uh, Frank Kermit is my guest. He is uh, uh, the new newest relationship columnist for the West End Times. Uh, you can also find him at uh, uh, Frank Kermit. I mean, like. Uh, Frank, Frank talks. Talk. Talk. Am I tired tonight? You yeah, think, I think I'm just a little bit? Frank talks. Well, it's either that or you're completely mesmerized by my <laughs> yes. pause. Yes, that too. Before. Yes, you're not shy, are you? I used to be. Did you? Were you? I used to be. There was only one place I was not shy on stage. Really? Put me on stage. I wasn't shy. Like as a speaker when you would speak to groups? Uh, yeah, in front of mm -hmm. a class, uh, on this auditorium stage, uh, even if I wasn't the greatest singer. It was the one place I felt safe. Because I was in a position where I could see anybody who would be coming after me. Interesting. You know, put me in a small group, intimate group with my friends around. You know, one of them would pickpocket me. But put me up on a stage. I had everybody's attention. It was the one place that I felt powerful and completely safe. Is that what led you into theater and, and doing all of Because you did Absolutely. a degree in, in, in theater. and. Well, I did a degree in uh, communications. I did a minor in theater, but I also did a lot of drama therapy drama while therapy, right. I was in the theater. Right, right, right. And, um, I like, guess that would help for shy people, the drama therapy. It can. Uh, you know, there's Toastmasters where they learn how to give speeches, mm -hmm. uh, public speaking classes. You know, mind you, most shy people would just stay away from those workshops and classes because it's so difficult. Right. Um, if you're going to sign up for one of those, don't just sign up saying, yeah, well, I'm a shy person. I want to get over this. Look for a teacher who specializes in dealing with shy people so that they know to take baby steps and try to find a way to make mm. you feel safe. I remember in university, I have a, I had a friend who was pretty shy and we took a class together in the social work department. And in social work, you have to do a lot of group stuff. And you have to get up in front of the class a lot. And you have to present a lot. And you, and she quit the program. She just quit. Mm -hmm. I can't do this. This is your, up your speed. This is not my speed, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and it, 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 was, it was from that shyness. It didn't stop her from doing other things. But that was something that she didn't uh, want to do. So what happens to do a lot of um, shy people... Uh, feel have a lot of self-loathing they can and it's not because uh just the fact that they're shy but being shy stops them from being able to connect with people sometimes the shyness will manifest in what would be interpreted as bizarre behaviors so let's say you're talking to someone and that person is shy and they don't really talk back or they're kind of looking away they don't mean to be rude but right. that's how they're coming across and because they come across as rude or cold or distant or uninterested, people turn around and say, wow, I feel insulted. I tried to talk to you. You you, you put up this wall. What have I done to you? Right. And so because they're on the receiving end of all of this negativity that they themselves have caused unintentionally right. with this behavior, there's a lot of self-loathing that comes in. So they start to alienate themselves even more. And they hate their shyness. Like, I, I've very rarely met a shy person who who liked their shyness. No. and They uh, saw it as a debilitating, in many ways, it can be quite debilitating. Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, to use a very uh, politically incorrect term, it's a handicap. Mm -hmm. it, it makes things so much more difficult. Shyness can be endearing. 
in the sense that if somebody is normally very outgoing and they're shy in just a couple of areas of their life, uh -huh. that's a little en endearing because what you're doing is taking a very strong person and showing a little vulnerability. Right. However, when it's the opposite, where you're shy in the majority of areas of your life and you're only outgoing in one or two, this makes it very difficult to connect with other human beings. And it can be paralyzing. Like, I, I know a lot of people who are paralyzed in, the, in the, the field of dating and who are, you know, uh, older and have never dated because of their shyness. They always say it's the shyness that gets in the way. Well, just like anxiety will cause physical symptoms, shyness is the same thing. Right. If you're really, really shy, your muscles will clench up. You might start sweating per, uh, profusely. It's, it's, it's a very uncomfortable position to be in. Anytime you're in a situation where you really don't know what's going to happen, right. and that's life, Right. A, th that feeling of being uncomfortable is just the barrier. So what what can a uh, what's the best way for a shy person to come out of their shell? Like, what are some of the things they can practice? Well, we've already talked about storytelling. We so we can talk about learning to calibrate. What does that mean? Well, that means figure out um, put people into categories and learn what behaviors are best suited for those categories. The examples I like to give are when you go to a funeral, you're going to exhibit certain behaviors that you wouldn't exhibit at a wedding. Right. When you're going to a wedding, you're going to exhibit certain behaviors you wouldn't do at work with your right. boss and that sort of thing. So you just want to start figuring out what behaviors are appropriate to what settings. Learning that is going to help with shyness. Some of the other things that I would recommend people do. First of all, practice smiling. Mm -hmm. Shy people don't realize this, but they rarely smile. Well, they are looking down often at their when they're walking. They're looking at their feet. They're not exactly. looking straight ahead and... Who are they going to smile to? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you have to practice smiling just to let the people around you know that you're not scowling at them. Because most people aren't going to think, oh, this person is just shy. Right. Most people are going to assume this person doesn't like me. Or they're mean or they're snobby or they're cold or they're something else. You mm -hmm. don't often get the shy label. You get all the other stuff. that comes. Exactly. Right. Now, we should also talk about eye contact. Mm -hmm. Now, for a shy person, what I normally recommend, when you look at somebody... You don't look them directly in the eye because that might be too intimidating for the shy person. So look at the person right in the smack in the middle of the forehead. So right now, Dr. Laurie, I'm looking at you and I'm looking straight into your eye. You Can you tell that I'm looking in your eye? Uh, I feel like you're looking at me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to look at the center of your forehead. Do you, does it still feel like I'm looking you in the eye? Yeah, it does, your eyes haven't moved. Exactly. But okay. the, my focus right now is so on your forehead, but it still looks like I'm looking you in the eye. Okay. That makes it safe for me as a shy person to make eye contact with oh, you. Good trick. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it works. Mm -hmm. So if I start getting nervous, I don't look you in the eye. I look you in the forehead, and all of a sudden, I can be Kermit. Okay. <laughs> you be Kermit. Okay. I like <laughs> what you else? You be, you be Lori. Okay. Uh, focus on your body posture. Mm-hmm. Because, again, a shy person gets so inside their own head, they don't realize how they're coming across. So part of it is to bring them into a moment of awareness. I am aware of my body posture. Oh, wait a minute. I'm slouching. I'm going to sit up more. Oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm curled up and, and scowling. No, I'm going to turn and face the people that I want to talk to. I'm going to make it a point to look at the person's forehead and fake that I'm looking into their eyes to get me through this moment. I'm going to smile so that the person says, oh, someone's looking at me, and they've got a little smile. It means that they like what they see. They mm -hmm. kind of like me. Maybe they want to have a conversation. Right. And that's maybe the trickiest part is how do we start that conversation when you're shy? It's the, so you see somebody that might interest you. You think, oh, I'd like to talk to this person what do I say? How do I do it? That, because, and I've heard this from some guys that say, I, I'm afraid of coming off creepy. Well, if you've been shy most of your life, you probably have come across creepy. <laughs> you've probably been called <laughs> oh, creepy. And it's, it's a hard thing. That's why sometimes you need a coach with you who's going to say, okay, you're going to go there, and then they're going to watch your behaviors and your body posture. And then comment and say, okay, this is why she was freaking out when you were approaching her. Okay. One of the best ways that you're approaching someone is just to go up and you can either pay them a compliment and in certain circles that's considered very unseductive because you're going up and telling somebody that you, you know, oh, I happen to like that about you. Well, I think that it's a nice place to start if you're a shy person because shy people generally want to be good people. 
They want to be nice. They don't want to. They are hurt. nice. Usually, it's those nice guys or the ni- the exactly. very nice people. Mm-hmm. So let's take that. Let's work with that. Let's work within that scope. They want to be good people who don't hurt anyone. So go up and pay somebody a compliment. Here's the key: you pay them a compliment on something that they can control. A person doesn't control their genetics, so you don't compliment somebody by saying, wow, I think you're absolutely gorgeous and stunning. Or I love your face or whatever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you do compliment them on their choice of wardrobe. Maybe they're carrying an accessory. Then whatever it is that you compliment them on when you say hello, relate it to a story in your past. For example, let's say I wanted to approach you. I'll look at your glasses. And I'll say that's a very interesting choice of glasses. I see it has uh, the studded diamonds on mm-hmm. either side. It reminds me of when I was a kid going to the beach in the pebbles. And then you go on to a whole exactly. thing like that. More on shyness uh, with uh, Frank Kermit right here on Passion on CJD 800. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the book, I'm a Man, That's My Job, The Philosophy of a Seducer. Your inner game is as unique and personal as your signature or your fingerprints. This book provides you with the means to create your own seduction persona. By this, learn what it means to be a man and attract the women you want. Learn about how men and women think differently and how to take the lead in a relationship. This book is for you at franktalks.com. This is Passion with Dr. Lori Batito on Montreal's News Talk Leader, CJAD 800. Dating dilemmas tonight on Passion. If you have questions, Frank Kermit is here. He uh, is a dating coach and has written many books on the subject of dating. He's also the relationship columnist of the West End Times now. Uh, If you have questions, we're talking about shyness tonight. And I don't know if you've ever... Uh, been with someone who was shy or if you experienced uh, painful shyness at some point in your life, you overcame it, you may want to tell us a little bit about it. 514-790-0991. What about the reverse? I've I've heard some people who may be interested in someone who's shy but don't quite know, you know, what do I do? Don't want to scare them off. Like, how, how do you deal with that? There really isn't that much you can do. If someone has an issue, then it's not your job to be their therapist or to solve their problem. You want to be their partner, not their doctor. Right. Now, with that said, there are some things you can do that will communicate to a shy person that you actually have a legitimate interest. Sometimes shy people are scared of being hurt, of being misled, of being made fun of. So if you actually show some interest in a shy person, they might start thinking, oh, this person is setting me up to hurt me because they don't really like me. One of the things you can do, tell that person what you find unique about them. And it has to be something that the person, the shy person, will acknowledge is unique about them. That you're not just making it up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, look, I don't know everything about you and I want to learn, you know, learn more about you. But the thing about you that I like is, and then you tell them what makes them unique. And that'll at least communicate to the shy person that you have a legitimate interest And then from there, you can say, why don't we get together and just get to know each other more? Now, a shy person, because they're shy, is going to want a date that has lots of distractions. Mm. I don't normally like... Not a a, a sit-down meal, one in front of the other. Exactly. Okay. So uh, back and forth uh, over coffee might be too much. That's why going to a movie is great with a shy person. You know, they're thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to be on a date for three and a half hours. I can spend an hour and a half at least just watching the movie. Okay, that works for me. (laughs) <laughs> and they can learn just to feel safe with you. Right. Never judge a shy person. Right. Never judge. Yeah, it's, I'm sure that, that that's a fear of being judged, too. Uh, let's go to Kayla. Hi, Kayla. Hi, Lori. Thank you for taking my call. My pleasure. You know, I struggled with the painful shyness. I mean, it was debilitating as a teenager. You know, I would meet up with somebody on the street, across the street, so I wouldn't have to say hi. Wow. And uh, one of the things that really helped me out is I got a job at McDonald's and just the repetition of, you know, Big Mac, large fries, you know, a Coke and an apple pie. It was just, I didn't have to, um, um, you know, ha- have a conversation with somebody because it was the same thing over and over and over. And that got me out into the public and got me out, you know, I guess up and moving in terms of, you know, getting. Well, exposure to, to people, right? It just gave you a lot of exposure to so many different people. 
Right. And the thing is, but it wasn't that complicated. I just had to learn a menu. And so that was one of the things that really helped me. And then after that, I I just forced myself to go out. I applied for nursing. I ended up, uh, you know, a lot of my patients were, you know, my audience at some level. And it was, again, it was the same thing. I really didn't have to communicate outside of, you know, some medical terms. and But that they taught you how to communicate. And then after that, I was still shy and I'd go into these uh, periods of just being, you know, um, just isolate. And I realized I had a problem with isolation. And mm-hmm. then um, pro- probably my early 20s, I started to do stand-up comedy. And wow. I, I know. I know. <gasps> that was one of the things that came out of, you know, being painfully shy and, you know, the depression that goes along with it was this comedic side. Wow. And that's where I decided. And I I guess I'd taken a course as well on, you know, combating your fears because I had projective fear of okay. uh, really relate of, you know, going out on a date or, you know, just talking myself out of it completely because I played the tape to the end, like right before I ended up on the date and just canceled before. Wow. And um, so the comedy came about, uh, you know, just to conquer my fear. And I'd taken a class on positive thinking or, you know, how to combat all those fears. And they bottom line they talked about you know the committee the voice in the head and they labeled it and they said it's not real it just will try to talk your ego will try to talk you out of things that you'd like to do and i realized okay this is just this is not true right this is just my thinking and you know so i would um you know attempt to you know go off like do stand-up comedy or get go out on a date talk myself out of it and then just blow it into something that was ridiculous and that I just made that part of my comedy routine that's great I know that's (laughs) awesome (laughs) isn't it don't they say that a lot of comics and we'll have to ask Joey this but uh, a lot of comics are in fact really shy uh, off stage oh absolutely you know people don't believe I do comedy Um, and today I, I, I I guess I use it more to public speak because I do a lot of public speaking. And, in fact, I'm on the radio. I have a small little radio show. But the fact that I'm able to do that today has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, the, the, the voice in the head is not yeah. truth, actually. It, yeah. You have to – it's direct acts against your will. Yeah, exactly. Kayla, thanks so much. Where can we uh, go watch your acts? Um, well, you can probably view me on YouTube. I'm under Kayla McCoy Rosen. You can. Okay. Uh, yeah. We'll write that down. Thanks so much. All right. Thank All you. right. Have a good night. Bye bye. Great call. Uh, more with uh, Frank Kermit coming up on Dating Dilemmas here on Passion. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the book, I'm a Man, That's My Job, The Philosophy of a Seducer. Your inner game is as unique and personal as your signature or your fingerprints. This book provides you with the means to create your own seduction persona. By this, learn what it means to be a man and attract the women you want. Learn about how men and women think differently and how to take the lead in a relationship. This book is for you at franktalks.com. This is Passion with Dr. Lori Batito on Montreal's News Talk oh, Leader, CJD 800. The wings of the bluebird as she sings. Shyness tonight on Dating Dilemmas. And it is a dilemma when you are very shy and you want to get out there in the dating world. And look, all of us want to love and be loved. And sometimes just trying to get to that point is painful. And, and I think the the word is painful for a lot of shy people. Like some people say, oh, I'm a little shy. There's a little shy, and then there's painfully shy. And you really have to work to get over that. I mean, because it can be debilitating in, in many areas. So what, you know, what can, should somebody who's shy see a coach, a therapist? Uh, I mean, Kayla, the, our last caller brought up, she didn't actually say the words, but CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy techniques work mm-hmm. because they combat those, neg- that negative thinking in the head that seems to control our, be- you know, that controls our behavior, which makes it that much easier to be shy. One of the key areas, if you're going to overcome shyness or any debilitating, limiting belief, is you have to distinguish the difference between reality and something you've created from within yeah. inside you. Yeah, you really and, have to be in touch with those cognitions, with those thoughts. Exactly, and that's yeah. something that cognitive behavioral therapy really, really specializes yeah. in. It's about questioning whether or not this belief that you have, as strong as it is, 
is it based on reality or is it based on just yeah. some interpretation of it? Right. I also like the idea of, uh, of coaching uh, in, in, you know, where you can actually go out with somebody and coach them in vivo, like right in, you know, in the environment that they need to be in, mm-hmm. um, which is also why sometimes I wish, you know, sex surrogates were also legal because sometimes we do need those just to help those kinds of shy people even around sexuality, which is a whole other issue, which we, of course, don't have time for. Frank, thank you very much. We'll catch up with you in November. Yep, this was show number 18. It's our 18-month anniversary. Hey, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. (laughs) All right. Uh, If uh, you need to reach me, passion at cjd.com. I want to thank all of you for uh, listening. Those of you who called in, thank you. Um, Thanks to Mike Babbins, our technical uh, producer as well. Up next, you've got uh, news. And, of course, Joey Elias joins you for his comedy show. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the evening. And remember, life is short, so do take the time to smell the flowers and indulge your passions. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the book, I'm a Man, That's My Job, The Philosophy of a Seducer. Your inner game is as unique and personal as your signature or your fingerprints. This book provides you with the means to create your own seduction persona. By this, learn what it means to be a man and attract the women you want. Learn about how men and women think differently and how to take the lead in a relationship. This book is for you at franktalks.com.